Hey guys, so trying out the ring light here. It's much better now like this rather than that overhead disgusting yellow ring light. I have a still steamy hot chicken Swiss pasta dish that I just made. Let's see if the Swiss melted. Eh, kind of. <laughs> I didn't have enough time. I guess by the time I set up my equipment, it just couldn't uh, soften. It kind of got hard actually while it was cooling down. I'll try to mix some of it in. I didn't have any other cheese, so I was like, oh. But anyway, my dishes always end up wacky somehow. Mmm, tastes good. Mmm. I would have liked a chicken parm, but I really need to go shopping. Maybe I can add some crushed pepper to my dish. Spice things up a bit, cause that cayenne on my chicken was not enough. I've been eating a lot of chicken lately in replacement of meat. And although I, I seem leaner, it seem, I feel healthier. I have to take my glasses off because they keep getting steamy. I was gonna slice and dice the chicken in this. Oh, much better with that crushed pepper. Mmm, mouth watering. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's fettuccine. Mmm. These are chicken tenderloins and Swiss cheese. It's just so good, wow. Actually, you did a good job. But fettuccine noodles really do take a while to boil, to soften, and they do stiffen very fast. Like as soon as you wipe the boiling water from the noodles, they begin to harden right away. It's like very hard, dry instead. So to defeat that, they require sauces like Alfredo cheese and a milky one to moisten it and trap the moisture, right? Maybe even like oil, like I cooked these chicken with olive oil this time instead of vegetable as usual and it tastes so much more quality. Mm. Much better. I'm looking forward to shopping around on the shelves and getting other foods and cooking with other foods. I really do miss cooking. Maybe I can vlog one day how I make my um, Mexican style tacos because you guys really enjoyed that when I filmed an ASMR mukbang with them. And you said it looked great. It does take a long time and it requires a lot of ingredients, but it truly is a specialty. I mean, it's something you can indulge in for an eternity. It never gets old. Mm -hmm. It also helpful to melt and glaze the cheese, any kind over the chicken while you cook it. I was just kind of hoping that it would melt itself, but it didn't, so. <laughs> oh, most of it stuck to the bottom. It actually did melt pretty sufficiently. It just didn't rotate the noodles enough. Oopsie, see. <laughs> now that looks more like a dish. <laughs> Authentic one recipe. The Italiano. How are you guys doing? I'm glad you're enjoying my vlogs for once. <laughs> I'm just kidding. At one point, now I can put them on. So it's not steaming hot anymore. 
does cool down pretty fast, these fettuccine, but at one point I was like, oh no, <clears throat> what am I doing wrong? <clears throat> oh, sorry, crushed pepper got in my throat. You know? Because I noticed at first my vlogs were getting different kind of feedback. Maybe people were just not used to seeing me daily vlogs. Like this channel has been like, <laughs> basically needing to be resurrected let's put it that way <laughs> i've been putting it aside for so many years and i guess what i call the dead subscribers who just subscribed and like totally forgot about me <laughs> or this channel mm. probably didn't like that started posting daily like oh quit notifying me <laughs> Unsub. I mean, that's how YouTube works. Oh my god. My algorithm's pretty messed nowadays, anyway. What is going on in the Twitterverse? I, like, you refresh Twitter every half hour. It's like, new news. I'm like, oh my god. Can we just get a break this year? Like, no. 2021 has to compete with 2020. I put two slices of Swiss. Probably should have put three or four. Lesson learned. I was gonna make a sauce, but I literally did not have any ingredients. Like, I'm running low on a lot of food. I just really need to stop being lazy and go to the store. And then tomorrow, my laziness overtakes me and I go to Wendy's watch. Mm -hmm. um. I'm gonna try to be more healthy though. I cook more, you know? I haven't been to a fast food place. Probably a month. I admire people who just avoid drive through though, like the plague, I mean. It is a commitment to cook every day, especially when, rather than order takeout, especially when uh, you're busy. I wanted to talk to you about something while I'm finishing my dinner. Like I notice people, like especially women, really do crave like company. And they crave to have like a partnership. More so than men. I've been in a place a couple years ago where I just like really like I felt like I could not live without this person or you know I was waiting for their every text message you know checking my phone obsessively and it's crazy to think how much has changed to where I was like I don't even crave that I don't even want that kind of text attention nothing and if these same people in my past were to reach out to me today, I'd be like, nope, bye. <laughs> mm. It feels much better now, more peaceful. It really does. I don't know why I ever went through that, why I ever put myself through that. I 
It's a mystery. It was a strange time. You know, Judge Lynn Toller, Miss Toller. <laughs> like sometimes their clips randomly show up in my recommended. And one of them was like, something about like, you're happy being alone, like. And the judge basically told this woman, like, yeah, you don't need a man, like, to hold on to someone, you're educated, you're beautiful, you know, you don't need all these things. And she started crying, it hit her, right? And then seeing her was like seeing myself two years ago. And I felt like sympathy and a deep compassion for myself. I actually feel the pain of my past self right now. And I feel sorry and sad that I ever had to go through that. I'm glad I did to realize the other side. Mm. I don't know where my self-esteem was at the time, why I had to put myself through that. I, I, I just, I will never know. I was literally becoming a home wrecker. That's what it was. I would just be with anyone just to be with them because I craved company so bad. I would put myself through a situation after situation that was tough, not the right people. And when you're in that, you can't see the other side. And someone was telling me like, actually a couple of people were telling me like that I couldn't see the other side, but they tried not to hurt my feelings, you know? Because of the way I would describe them, they just knew I didn't love them. They knew this wasn't the person for me. And it hurt to hear, and, and that's kind of why I like shied away from them, but they were right all along. Every person I was with was literally doing the same as me. Being with other people, multiple other partners. It was horrible. It was such a sad time. And people saw my sadness and I didn't see it for myself. I was hiding my pain for so long. I'm crazy to think like looking back, like, oh my God, like I put myself through that. Like I feel actually, and I think that's finally the self love. Like I genuinely feel sorry for my past self. Like, I don't even want to watch, like, old videos from two years ago. Of mine, like, not that I watch my own videos, but, like, sometimes I'll click and be like, oh my god, I actually did that. And, like, a video did well, and I'm going to be click on it and be like, oh, let me see why it did so well. And I still wouldn't know, because videos just do well randomly. <laughs> but it would pain me to see that video i'll be like oh no those were like dark times for me i, I don't want to look at that and I, I don't even look at my old content click them anymore because maybe some people couldn't see it but i was masking so much pain so it actually pains me to look at my past self it really does how much i covered And I'm simply talking about my past because I'm just reflecting. I'm looking back and realizing the challenges I faced, the struggles, how far I've come. 
And that's why back then I was doing a lot of self-analysis videos, talking about different subjects, life advice. My whole theme of my channel was different. And it was a very healing time for me, you know. And I'm glad I had an audience to listen to me. I'm glad I had the voice to speak out about this in hopes of preventing other people from going through the pain of that type of situation. So many people, even people like, man, people are reaching out to me left and right, old exes, old friends, old partners, let them go. It's not worth it, I'm telling you. If you don't talk to someone for four years and you come back to them, 95% of the time, it just ain't gonna work out. And it's a feeling, you know that. Especially after a particular age, people don't change. They are stuck in their ways. I'm not gonna lie to that. One of my exes from long, like way back. I'm talking maybe a dec up to a decade ago. Um, I saw them now, like on Facebook, like they just randomly show up and they recommend it. And that's why I don't like that whole Facebook thing. They just show up randomly and they're like, oh. And it was, you know, the, the tip, I wasn't even tempted, honestly. Because I know how damaging and bad that would be for me. And we live so far away from each other. It would be irrelevant even to initiate contact. <laughs> and thank God I don't have an actual Facebook. Like, this was just on like a soccer account that manages my page. But I saw them. I'm like, oh my God, like they, they lost weight. They look even more attractive than they already were. And they looked even fit. They looked healthy and they looked different. They looked better. I was like... You know, and looks are deceiving, of course. You can't just look at a person. But I'm like, oh my God, they changed in the decade, you know, since we last spoke. Yada, yada, yada. And, you know, you're like thinking in your head, like, mm hmm, that's the devil trying to <laughs> fool you. And, you know, like, reach out and don't go back. You know, as soon as I'm like officially done and over, and then these things show up in your life to tempt you. So you just have to stop the temptation. It's like an addict. I was an addict when it came to people, right? When it came to men, specifically relationships wanting their love. I was an addict. In a sense, I still consider myself one because once you are, you always are for life, pretty much. So you always have to kind of remind yourself or stay, keep your sobriety basically in check. Don't go on those dating apps. Don't go do that. You know, and that's why I stopped all that because it was bad for me. It was bad for my heart, my soul. That's not why I'm here. You know, it just brought me so much pain. If the right moment ever comes up with someone, even then, honestly, I'm so, like, disgusted with my past that I'm like, it doesn't even interest me right now. And you have to get to a level of disgust where you just had enough, and that was me. And, um, so, yeah. They had money, like, their family has money. They have a particular social status. They, they know someone who's huge in politics. I can't say who, but, you know, it was tempting to reach back out, you know, like, for whether it's for status reasons, financial reasons... Um, most of it was love at the time because we had a deep connection for about a couple of years and they kept trying to like reach out to me on and off and I just kept shying away, you know, doing my own thing. But yeah, you see something like that and you just have to like remind yourself like, what would Jesus do? <laughs> I don't know. You know, you, you just have to like do something to kind of snap out of it, like keep a wristband or something as a reminder of your past pain. And like, do you want to go that? So my breaking point was I was literally going to die. I said to myself, Tony, if you download apps like Grindr one more time, you are literally going to die because the heartbreak was so painful. There were times I was swigging the bottle and I was literally like sobbing on the floor profusely. I mean, this was like over a year ago. It was so bad. And like, I would put on that mask and then cry myself to sleep later and no one would know, you know? So you have to actively daily remind yourself of your past pain. And that was my breaking point. That was my disgusted breaking point. Like, 
if you do this one more time, you are literally going to die. So that's, that's what I had to tell myself to remind myself like, okay, not to do that again. So anyway, guys, hope you get my point. That was a good dinner. I'm full. I uh, can't believe I actually finished the whole plate. Wow, there's a lot of food. I still have a little bit more leftover. Uh, I'm going to go feed Paco now. Thank you for joining me in this journey. I just wanted to share that while I had dinner. I guess I had no idea I was even going to, you know, I just like to start and whatever comes on my mind, I share and talk about. But uh, yeah, hope you had fun joining me maybe for dinner as well. Hopefully I upload this six o'clock yeah eastern time pretty good time if you're west california most of you so all right guys enjoy you take care bye guys